Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna check out this Mantis Tornado Skimmer and see if it is the new budget king in town. All right, thank you for joining me in another episode of Parker's Reefs where we're gonna check out this brand new budget priced skimmer in town. I will point out that Mantis did provide this skimmer for the purpose of this review, but you can rest assured that you will get my truthful and honest opinion warts and all of this skimmer. So I guess uh, we should probably check out some of its features, unbox it, have a good close look up of it. I'll go whack it in my frag tank, get it cranking. We'll let it run for a couple of weeks and we'll give a good review of how it performs. So uh, let's check it out. All right, just before we rip into the unboxing, let's have a look at some of the features mentioned on the box itself. You will note that it's made in China, not unusual for uh, items of this price point, but this one is assembled in Australia. And I'm led to believe that it's assembled by Nick himself from Mantis. So you know you've got a quality pair of hands from an expert reef aquarist going over every single one of these skimmers to make sure it's gonna perform flawlessly in your reef tank. Now, it uses 24 volt DC power, which means it's nice and safe and efficient. It's got very impressive performance for a very small footprint, which is something that every skimmer goes after. We've got this interestingly distinctive turbulence reducing body. We'll check that out a bit more when we open up the box. It's got solid PVC and acrylic construction. I am liking this sort of theme at the moment to go for PVC and acrylic. Seems to make a very strong and high quality finish. We've got a bubble dispersant chamber that's fairly uh, standard. Efficient, quiet operation will be the judge of that. Dissembles completely for easy cleaning and maintenance. We'll also check that out. Efficient, quiet, controllable tornado skimmer pump. Now, I have tested one of the Mantis tornado pumps before about a year to a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and I was highly impressed for its performance against price points. So I expect nothing less than a high quality Mantis pump. And uh, last but not least, in sump installation only, which, um, I mean, that goes without saying really, but uh, we also get a bio load handling, making sure that this is the 150. There is other sizes available. I'll show them on screen now, going from, I think, a 120, 150, 180, and a 200. This one gives you a rough idea of the bio load handling. It's something that's always a bit subjective, but uh, I like to look at the heavy end and go, well, this skim is good for 500 liters. So uh, let's rip the box open and get stuck into it. All right, enough pondering over the box. The suspense is killing me because I have yet to seen one of these guys in person. So uh, let's get out the old trusty Leatherman. Let's unbox this bad boy live and uh, see what it is like. Just making sure I don't uh, cut any of the uh, internals. All right, I'll put that knife away before I hurt myself. All right, what do we got here? Whoa, this is a big box. Okay, so we get some instructions. We get a Mantis controller. We get the little silencer with an adjustable screw. Nice, nice. We get some uh, silicon hose for the drain, it looks. Australian plug. And a tiny little power supply. Wow, this guy is small. Let's have a look at the voltage of this bad boy. 24 volts at two amps. That's a baby little power supply. That's uh, quite neat. Uh, what else have we got in here? Looks like some mounting hardware for the controller. Oop, there's the zip tie. So we get uh, some 3M double-sided tape. We get some of these uh, little cable management uh, devices that you have 3M tape on the back. You can then use zip ties to keep the cords and things out of the way. Nice touch, I like that. I'm gonna put these aside there. All right, what else have we got in here? A well-packaged cup. Must admit, I'm liking the uh, the black and white colour scheme. Not just because I barrack for uh, the Collingwood Magpies in AFL, but uh, just because it's it's going to suit everyone's colour scheme. Whether you've gone for red and white, or you've gone something crazy with oranges or whatever, black and white's a safe choice. Things like um, some other skimmers out there that might be like bright orange or bright purple or something like that. Might not suit your color scheme, I know it's uh, aesthetics, but um, you know, we try to create an aesthetically pleasing reef tank, so we wanna have aesthetically pleasing equipment. And um, I like the idea of the black and white uh, combo there. It's got a nice little uh, silicon O-ring on that lid, so that's gonna push down in there. And we'll see how she goes. All right, the main event, get that box out of the way. Creating a huge mess in my kitchen, but I'll deal with that later. 
Here he is with the little uh, Mantis pump pre-installed. Wow, those feet are nice and soft. Let me have a look at those. Wow, there's some really nice, big, soft, vibration absorbing feet. Now I can see what they mean by this hexagonal body. It, uh, it really is hexagonal. <laughs> and it's got a, a good uh, bubble dispersant plate there, that tiny little Mantis pump in there. What a ripper. I quite like the, uh, the nice solid and sturdy gate adjustment there. That must open something on the bottom, it does. So that lets uh, the bubbles, or the water out I should say, from the bottom, which should help keep the uh, micro bubbles to a minimum. Let's uh, assemble this guy up and um, get ready to install it on the tank. I should point out that the uh, skimmer cup does come with a little plug. If you just want to keep the uh, skimmer in there, or it also comes, if I can get the plug back in there, also comes with a hose option if you want to have that ability to uh, point it outside your sump and empty it out. I might keep that one separate for now. All right, assembly done, as easy as that. Now that I've assembled it, maybe we'll dismantle this skimmer just to see how much it is dismantable so that you can give it a good thorough cleaning just before I whack it in the tank and get it all wet. All right, now that we've dismantled this skimmer, uh, as far as I think I can go, I mean, I could go further by taking the uh, motor block off the feet here and possibly pulling uh, this part of, off, but um, seems unnecessary. It's given me a good opportunity to check out the quality of the acrylic, which feels quite sturdy. I have to admit, it doesn't have the same level of uh, luxe feel to it to uh, some other high-end skimmers on the market, but I mean, I'm talking skimmers that are probably three to four times the price, so. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, the little skimmer motor in here is tiny. What a little gem that is. And uh, I've taken the Impala out and um, the little bearing option here. All well, looks very nice. Nice little needle wheel skimmer. Feels like a solid bit of gear. Uh, the diffuser plate or the bubble plate, which um, is a fairly standard style in my opinion. Um, just a basic acrylic piece there. That, that looks like that'll do the job nicely. I really love these uh, silicon feet, which the uh, body bolts through. The only thing that I'd possibly say is, I don't know, I feel like there's something you could possibly lose when pulling the skimmer apart. Um, just don't be clumsy like me, you won't lose them. Um, what else have we got? The cup. I mean, this skimmer is suited for probably a 500 litre tank. It's a fairly small cup, I mean, that being said, when that's full of gunk, it's gonna stink pretty bad, so it's probably all you need. And of course, it does have the drain on it, so if you wanna run it to an external reservoir to catch even more skimmate, you're totally welcome to, but um, I guess we're probably at the point now, oh, I should have a look at the volute, because um, to me, that's the most important part. That's how, uh, what dictates the performance of a skimmer, and um, this looks tidy. There's nothing uh, out of the ordinary there. It looks fairly uh, conventional, which, Sometimes I think it's good. Sometimes we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, this is not meant to be uh, a skimmer changing the way skimmers operate. It's just meant to be a really good value for money performing skimmer. So um, there's nothing here that catches my eye as being over the top bad or over the top good. It all is uh, looking as I would expect from Mantis. So uh, let me get this bad boy back together, make sure I put it together correctly. Then we'll go pop it into the frag tank and see how it performs. All right, after a couple of false starts, I've got this skimmer back together. My uh, inexperience in handling the uh, Mantis skimmer caught me out in a couple of different spots. I'll go over those details in the uh, summary. What I wanna do now is get this into my frag tank so we can fire it up, get it pumping some air and water through it. We can then let it run for a couple of weeks and see how it performs over that time in my Cade frag tank. Let's go do it. All right, let's fire this bad boy up and uh, see what it does. Plug in the controller now. It is set to its slower speed with the gate wide open. And as expected, it uh, sits a little low. In fact, it's starting to climb fairly quickly. Let me just see what I can uh, do with this controller. 
mode is off, mode is on, and we've got up to five steps. Now I can play with the air. Ah, oh, look at all that <laughs> foam in the neck. Okay, she's ramping up, I might turn it down a step or two. That's down to step three. What a little beast. It is emitting the tiniest of hums that potentially could bed in as the uh, as the motor gets you know a few minutes of runtime under its belt. Just stripped up the air a little bit. See what that does. I'm quite impressed by the uh, amount of fine bubbles in the uh, neck of it. There, I might be able to turn the speed up one more space now. All right, we're up to speed four or five. The uh, body is still wide open. Of course, I can close that up. And uh, as you would expect, it makes it fill up really quickly. <laughs> so what happens when you go from fully open to fully closed. We'll dial that back. I might leave it uh, sitting deliberately a bit low just while it beds in and uh, we'll see how she runs over the next um, next week or two. Beautiful. I'll leave it run at that. I'll check back in with you in the next uh, couple days and then in the next week and uh, we'll wrap this video up. All right, I've had the Mantis Tornado 150 running in this frag tank now for three days and I'm quite impressed by the skimmate it's pulled out. Just to set the scene for you, this tank has basically no bio load whatsoever. It has no fish, about five kilos of live rock, very little corals, and it did have a oversized high quality skimmer running in here prior to this going in. So um, the fact that it's been able to pull out anything at all is a huge accomplishment. And um, whilst the skimmer's a little bit wet, it's probably just been set a little bit uh, high, the water level. The water level itself and the bubbles remain very consistent, which I quite like. What I wanna do now is uh, empty out this cup and uh, basically reset the skimmer. And then I'm gonna feed this tank fairly heavy over the next week to week and a half and um, stir up a bit of detritus in there and just push this tornado, Mantis Tornado skimmer to see how far it can go and what kind of skimmate we can get out of it. I might lower the water height in there a little bit just so we can pull out some real nice dry skimmate and um, we'll see how we go. So uh, I'm gonna empty it now and uh, then we'll touch base again in a week and a half. Okay, now it has only been one day since I uh, disrupted all the detritus in this frag tank and uh, gave the rocks a good turkey baste. And I did say that I wanted to give it a week to a week and a half, but in that time, Victoria has joined New South Wales and Queensland in a lockdown. And Nick from Mantis Australia has said, the people need some joy, let's give a skimmer away. So <laughs> for that reason, I need to push this review through a little bit quicker. Now, obviously I haven't quite had the time to uh, get a full cup of skimmate yet. I did have it up to about here before and then I drained it out after that first couple of days of operation. And uh, in the next day, I've pulled out this much here of uh, a fairly uh, tea-like substance. Not that dry skimmate yet, but that's because I have been running, you can see the bubble height there, quite high in the skimmer just to get it pulling out as much as possible. You can still see that even after a week, this skimmer is giving a very nice consistent bubble. That foam is just gorgeous on the top there. I'll take the lid off so you can have a good look. Remembering this is a budget end skimmer and its uh, performance is absolutely amazing, particularly at this price point. It's nice and quiet. It does give out the tiniest little audible hum, but um, I've got the cabinet door off here, as you can see, and uh, it's churning away and uh, you have to really have your head next to it to hear the noise. I do love the very fine control on the uh, silencer here. This uh, screw adjustment here between the two uh, air intakes is very, very precise. And I absolutely love this geared uh, gate outlet for uh, the water height control. As you can see by the uh, Sumpy, I'll get the camera down nice and low. There's absolutely no micro bubbling whatsoever coming out of this guy here at all. It's keeping all of those bubbles up nice and high in the body of the skimmer. And the uh, water outlet's actually right down here. So we have no micro bubbling coming out at all. Obviously, I haven't given it the time to really pull out a nice dry skimmate, but uh, 
remembering this tank was over skimmed before. This skim has been on there a week. I have emptied the cup in that week. We had it probably twice that much before. Still fairly wet, but um, what an absolute ripper of a unit. Now, one other thing I should point out, in that time, I have discovered one other thing that I said at the start of the video, which was wrong, and that is that the controller, I was under the impression it only had five steps of control. That was completely wrong. I just, uh, my finger, callousy fingers weren't pressing the buttons very well. If I keep pressing up, we actually have 20 steps of DC control. I like to run the, the motor on this uh, skimmer, particularly in this system, because it is a fairly large skimmer for a uh, frag tank with no fish. That's step five, but you actually have 20 steps of operation. <laughs> you see the uh, bubble height's a little bit higher after ramping that up, but um, it'll come back down again very, very soon. And you can see that nice, fine bubbling through the uh, body. Absolutely beautiful. Alright guys, there you have it. That is the unboxing and overview of the Mantis Tornado 150 Protein Skimmer. As promised in the video, I will go over my pros and cons for it, and then I'll let you know what you can do to win the actual unit that I've reviewed here. Let's start off with the cons, because I always like to finish on a high note. Alright, in the cons list, thankfully I can say it's quite small, but there are three things I wanted to touch on if I want to give you my complete, honest, transparent warts and all review. So the first con, in my opinion, is just Probably a lack of awareness of the unit, but when I assembled it after disassembly, I had a little bit of trouble. In fact, it took me three goes. When I put the volute onto the uh, motor housing, the front of the motor housing actually just twists onto the motor body. And when I put the volute on, I was twisting it and that would untwist the motor housing, requiring me to disassemble the skimmer again, put the motor housing back on and try again. Once I realized that you don't need to twist the volute when putting it in, you just push it straight in. It was no longer an issue, but it did cause me a little bit of uh, grief at the start of this review, so I figured I'd have to be completely transparent and share that as a con here. All right, the next con that I'll point out, and it's, I honestly felt a bit of a prick for saying it because it is such a very well afford or very well priced skimmer, but the motor did put out the tiniest little hum. That does surprise me considering how soft and squishy those sound absorbing feet were. But I do have to say that when you have your ear right next to it and you turn that motor up, it put out the tiniest hum. Not that you're gonna hear it when the cabinet doors are closed or anything like that, but it's definitely not silent. It is absolutely very quiet though. All right, finally, last up on my list of cons was the build quality. Whilst it absolutely does everything fine, there was nothing broken, no leaking parts, nothing like that. There was an absolute point of difference in the build quality between this and some very expensive options on the market, which you would expect, but um, I feel like I need to point it out that uh, just some of the glue seams and things like that are not up on par with something that's gonna cost you two or $3,000, nor should it when we're talking a $500 skimmer, but, if I'm gonna be absolutely transparent, I'll show you some of the glue seams and things like that so you can see what you're up for, but um, it's really a non-event, but I gotta share with you all of the cons. All right, the first pro in my list and probably the most important pro is the price of this unit, the Mantis Tornado Skimmer range varies from $450 Australian up to $880 Australian. The unit I reviewed came in at mid $500 Australian pricing, which there's just nothing else on the price point that can go remotely toe-to-toe -to -toe with this skimmer. So uh, value-wise, this thing's an absolute beast. All right, the next pro, and again, probably one of the most important ones, is the performance of this skimmer. I'm not sure if it was the octagonal body or hexagonal, whatever it was, the non-round shape of the body or whatever it was, but uh, putting this skimmer into my frag tank for a one week after it's been absolutely over-skimmed for a few months with no bio load in the system whatsoever, and it still managed to pull out some incredibly stinky skimmate. What more could one ask for? What an absolutely high performing unit. I would love to give this a solid six months to give you a really good review in a system that has lots of fish, but uh, I just want to give this skimmer away and uh, Nick's given me the all clear. So um, hopefully whoever wins it can give us their feedback in six months time to let us know if it's still working as well as it did for me during this week. All right, the next pro is the adjustability. Now there's probably three sub pros in this. First of all, it is a DC controllable skimmer and it has 20 steps of adjustment in the motor. That's absolutely unparalleled in um, 
definitely anything in this price point, but even against some of the most expensive skimmers on the market, 20 different speeds for the motor is just um, unbelievable. You're gonna be able to dial that in to suit any requirements, any system out there, and that's incredible. Add to that the fact that you've got that really nice and sturdy and very fine adjustment on that gate valve, which makes sure no micro bubbles whatsoever are coming out of the body. Incredible. And then last but not least, that nice little screw, which gave a very fine and precise adjustment on the air intake. You can just dial the skimmer in to work an absolute treat. And that is probably what contributes to the incredible performance of it. All right, and the last pro, last but not least, is the size of the unit. I have no doubt whatsoever that the skimmer I tested, the 150, would be more than comfortable in a 500 liter tank with a decent bio load. Now, I will put the dimensions of the skimmer up on screen here because I don't have them on the top of my head, but it is tiny. I'll get the measuring tape out and check it for you. This should fit in almost any sump, and um, for a 500 liter tank, this will slot into a space in your sump and just perform away. If you've got a sump like the Cade, it's gonna leave lots of room for other items which you may need down the track. It's just great to be able to have something performing that well without taking up all of your available space. So the small footprint is an absolute pro in my book. All right, guys, I will wrap the video up there. That is the Mantis Tornado 150. If you are in the market for a skimmer and you're trying to find the best bang for buck skimmer because you've potentially stretched your budget on other components of the tank, I think you'd be foolish not to have a very strong look at the Mantis Tornado range. They absolutely outperform their price point and I think you'd be highly unlikely to be disappointed with any aspects of this skimmer whatsoever. Now, I did mention we will give this skimmer away. Huge thank you to Nick from Aquabella for making that possible. All I'm gonna need you to do to be in the running is to be an Australian resident so I don't have to post this skimmer all around the world. Pop in the comment section down below where this skimmer is assembled and that will automatically put you into the running. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, feedback at all, pop it in the comment section down below. I personally reply to each and every one. And last but not least, if you wanna get involved in more giveaways and see some more reviews on products, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That'll ensure that you won't miss out on any future videos. Till next time guys, stay safe and keep briefing. Bye.